that seems like a cue to say something. <laughs> yeah. We are the Mingus, D Mingus Dynasty Quintet from New York City. Well, thank you so very much for joining us this evening. I'm going to stall for time. I promise that we're going to play some music. Please say hello to Lauren Sevian on the baritone saxophone. <laughs> Donald Edwards on the drums. <laughs> Andy McKee on the bass. <laughs> Helen Sung on the piano. <laughs> My name is Tatum Greenblatt and I play trumpet. And thank you. We are going to open uh, this set with a song that you should already know if you are hip enough.
Thank you. All right, now that we got, now we're warmed up. That was, of course, Boogie Stop Shuffle. And um, we're going to continue now with a song that um, is worthy of a historically accurate introduction. And so for that, I'm going to turn it over to our esteemed bassist, Mr. Andy McKee, and he is going to give you an historically accurate introduction to our next song. <laughs> Anyone knows me would know that's highly unlikely. <laughs> This, uh, this uh, composition is a Mingus piece called Peggy's Blue Skylight. The story goes like this. Um, Mingus had many friends in lots of different segments of society, some low, some high. I mean, high class. Echelon, yeah. <laughs> and high echelon. So um, um, Peggy Hitchcock was a pal of his. She had a, an estate upstate New York, where Mingus would go and hang out. At times, there were other historical figures. Timothy Leary was among them, and they were experimenting with life <laughs> and, <laughs> and enjoying the best things in life they could find. And uh, at Peggy Hitchcock's estate, there was a room with a skylight, and the skylight was made from the blue glass cover of a fighter jet cockpit. And uh, whatever conditions uh, um, precipitated this composition, Mingus found that blue skylight very motivating and is inspirational. <laughs> so he entitled this one, Peggy's Blue Skylight. <laughs>
Thank you so much, everybody. Please keep it going for the wonderful, lovely Helen Song. You heard her play Duke Ellington's Sound of Love and shading with some Duke compositions up in there as well. We segued into Jelly Roll. And now we're going to feature our trumpet player, Tatum Greenblatt. This is entitled Portrait.
Thank you very much. Um, so we are indeed celebrating 100 years of Charles Mingus. He was born on April 22nd, 1922. And since we are yet to reach April 22nd of 2023, we are still within the parameters of 100 years, very technically speaking, it is still appropriate to celebrate. Um, we also, in the past year within our organization, we lost some people um, that were very near and dear to us. Um, one of them was the great composer and arranger, Cy Johnson, who had a, um, a wonderful relationship with Charles for a great deal of the end of Charles's life, the last maybe 20 years. Um, Cy was a pianist in Charles's band, and many of the large ensemble works that Charles recorded later in his life were arranged by Cy, and then when the Mingus Big Band got together, um, the bulk of the music that was written for the ensemble and arranged for the ensemble was from the pen of Cy and all the way up until a couple of years ago. I mean, he, he made it to 92 and, uh, and he was still working basically up until COVID hit. Um, and so uh, we lost him and we, we miss him dearly. And um, also another 92 year old genius that we lost this year was Sue Mingus, um, the NEA jazz master. Uh, she was our fearless leader and our, you know, our mother hen and the, and the, the reason, I think it's fair to say, the reason that Charles Mingus's legacy has lived on after his life is because of the work of Sue. And she was, uh, quiet as it was kept, one of the most important band leaders in jazz history um, because she was able to keep together this, a, a very large, uh, <laughs> she herded cats <laughs> very well. Um, and we loved her dearly and we missed her. We miss her now. Um, and the, the, the last great titan of our family that we lost was the baritone saxophonist Ronnie Cuber. Um, he was, uh, I mean, you know, he was one of Lauren's great mentors and he held down the chair with such ferocity and authority. And um, I did a very dumb thing in sound check. I did a Ronnie Cuber impression. And it was effective enough that I now have to do it for you. <laughs> it is, it is, it's fitting. This is something that Ronnie would do on this tune. So we are going to show him some love. I apologize. Do we, how, how many, are there children in the audience? <laughs> Cover your ears. I'll try to keep this at least, you know, <laughs> functional. Yeah, it's, it's not me. It's Ronnie's spirit passing through me. Um, so um, I have to assume the position. Ronnie, Ronnie would get in like this. He had one of these statues. He was much bigger and he'd say, Helen, give me some of them uh, Manhattan chords. We're gonna take you back. Back to when I moved to New York City, 1968. All right, I'm going for it. It was a different time back then, a New York of the mid 20th century. It was kind of ugly. It wasn't this lily-livered Apple TV Disneyland that you have now. I'm talking about when New York was rough. Creatures walking the street at all times of day. Thieves, whores, pimps, muggers, buggers, brothers. That was the good New York City. So here I get off, I get to New York, and the first thing I do is I hop on the A train to Times Square. 1968, fog in the streets, fog in the skies, steam coming up from grates and stuff like that. And I get out of the train and I hear a sound. And man, that sound is the bass of Charles Mingus coming from Birdland. One thinks back on those times and they might get a little nostalgic for Times Square.
Nostalgia in Times Square. Yeah. We would now like to feature our low end. Um, and it must be noted that um, the bass that Andy McKee is playing on, if you recognize that bass, you're extremely hip. It's your bass? Well, it, but it, it, should be it should be noted that the lion's head on it um, is exactly as the same as what Charles Mingus used to have. So if you thought it was Mingus's bass, like I did, then <laughs> you are forgiven. <laughs> um, we are now going to feature uh, Lauren and Andy on um, probably Mingus's best known composition. This is one that he, uh, the story goes is that um, Mingus was on a gig and the news got to him of the death of the great Lester Young. And in sorrow um, and out of uh, you know, his heartfelt love for, this, for, for, the, for his friend, um, he improvised a, a piece on stage and then went home and uh, tried to remember what he had played and composed this piece which we will play for you now. This is Goodbye Pork Pie Hat.
That's Lauren Sevian on the baritone saxophone. Andy McKee on the bass. While we're at it, that's Helen Sung on the piano. Donald Edwards on the drums. Tatum Greenblatt on the trumpet. This is the Mingus Dynasty quintet. We got one more for you. Hope you've had a lovely evening. We appreciate you being here with us and spending some time listening to this music. We hope you've had as good a time listening as we've had playing. Um, and uh, we're going to do one more for you. This is Better Get Hit in Your Soul.
Lauren Savian, Donald Edwards, Andy McKee, Helen Sung, Tatum Greenblatt, we are the Mingus Dynasty Quintet. Thank you so very much. Charles Mingus.